and welcome to this series of animal characters drawing videos. Today we'll be drawing this sciencey spider who's busy experimenting away on their web. A genius in the making or a mad scientist? Let's find out. Get your pencils ready and let's get drawing. So we are drawing our scientist spider. So let's start with a circle right there in the middle for the head. And we're going to add in sort of some curved triangles just here at the front. Um, and these are going to be our spider's mandibles. So almost like the little extra fingers that um, the spider has around their mouth. And this particular spider that we're drawing is going to have, I think, four eyes. Maybe I'm going for a bit of a mad scientist thing, but this spider is going to have four eyes. So we're just going to draw a couple of eyes in here. So some circles, and I'm just almost drawing sort of some little half moon shapes here. And that gives the idea of the spider looking down. Now, before we go too much further, we want to draw another oval, another circle, kind of around the head. So it's almost like the head is sitting at the bottom section, and this big circle here is going to be the body. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle here and a circle here. Now, these circles represent the very first leg that we're going to draw. And these are really fun because these legs are doing some really interesting things because, of course, we've got a mad scientist spider on our hands. So I'm going to, as we do this, I'm going to add in some extra shapes here. So this could be maybe this is a beaker full of some sort of experimental something. I don't know. It's a mad scientist. Who knows what they're doing? So. I'm going to, I'm just, as you can see here, I'm just adding in some lines. So this is all we're doing. Basically, we're drawing stick figures. And these lines are just going to help us work out where everything is sitting. So these are the first two legs. But a spider has eight legs. And we've only drawn two, drawn two. So there are four on each side. So we're just going to add in sort of another sort of four circles here just to give us an idea of almost where the, where the hip bone or the shoulder bone of these legs are. And then we're going to work out where they're going. Now, I'm thinking our spider also needs to be standing on something. So let's draw, let's put a circ, a couple of really nicely drawn circles. It doesn't have to be nicely drawn, sorry, very sketchy drawn circles. As you can see, my circles are, are not circles by any means. So this is almost going to become a bit of a web, slightly wonky web, but that is absolutely fine. And then we can draw a couple of lines kind of running through it like that. And they don't have to be straight. In fact, you could get really creative with them and they could be all sort of wonky. There we go, I've drawn a wonky one there for you. Now that's the base of the web because what we're going to do now is going to put our spider on the web. So at the moment, it's just kind of floating in air. So let's start with this leg here. So we're going to go, we're going to draw it up and then we're going to draw it coming down and standing on that bit of spider silk. And likewise, let's draw this one coming down. And maybe this one's standing on the one behind it. And so you can work out where you want your legs to go. They can stand on any bit of spider silk that you want, um, or maybe they're standing on all of the same one together. It's entirely up to you how you would like to do it. But I'm thinking this this hand here. I think I think most most mad scientists at some point might be scratching their heads, going, "Am I am I doing the right thing here? Is this the right mixture? Who knows?" So I'm going to have that one scratching its head. Now I'm just going to add in a couple extras just so I've got them all in here. And I think that one's going to be at the very, very back there. And so this is the basic layout, the basic construction line of our 
side to spider but we're definitely not there yet it doesn't look kind of quite as mad scientist yet so now we get to add in all of the fun details so let's come up to the face now i'm thinking this spider um is going to be have some of that you know the spark the, the kind of really mustachey kind of furry mandibles uh so if you've ever seen any of the mad scientist spiders out uh, mad mad scientist spiders mad scientists out there uh, you'll see a lot of them will have like the grey moustache and everything like that or the, the weird tufts of hair. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that in. So it's going to be a slightly hairy spider. And if I painted this up, maybe maybe the spider would end up being, you know, kind of had have kind of grey bits in it, but grey hairs and things. And I'm going to give the spiders some eyebrows. Because I've got four eyes, I'm going to have four eyebrows. And let's come down to our hands. Now our hands don't have a lot of shape at the moment. And a lot of spiders have these very delicate pointed um, uh, legs and feet that it comes to. So I'm just going to make that a kind of a really nice curved triangle. And I'm just going to almost add cylinders to this section of its leg or arm. And then I kind of make this a bit of a cone shape. If you've ever seen what a cone a cone shape we're going to kind of always come to a point and then we're going to link it up to that circle around the shoulder and i'm going to do the same for this one over here but this one we're going to do something called foreshortening which is a little bit tricky so i'm going to make this hand this very similar to that one but here i'm just going to draw a little bit of a curve and then join it up to this shoulder now this is this is a this is foreshortening. This is sometimes a little bit tricky, but just see how you go. And then I'm going to go through and link and give a bit of body to all the rest of these. And what I might do for these back ones is I might even put almost like a little bit of an elbow elbow joint there, just so it all just joins up that little bit easier. All right, so just work your way through. This will take a little bit of time. We get all the legs in here and what I might do in a second now if you can see what you're doing you do not have to use an eraser to erase your lines in fact what you might want to do is you might want to trace this drawing and use it to make a good copy of the drawing but because I can't do that I'm going to just erase a few lines just to make it easier for you to see what I'm drawing because Sometimes it can get a little bit confusing when you're watching somebody else draw something. Because I know what I'm drawing, but it doesn't mean that you know what I'm drawing. So hopefully that's a little bit easier to see over there. And I'll just do the same to these legs back here. So you can see what we've done here is we've used overlapping. Oh, hang on, I missed one. There we go. I'm like, hang on, that doesn't look right. There we go. That's better. So we use something called um, overlapping. So this means that we'll put an object in front of another. Overlapping. I know it's not too hard, but this gives you this real feeling of depth. Now, sorry, I'm just messing around with this hand a little bit. I kind of really want it to look like he's kind of scratching his forehead and he's not really sure what's happening. And I'm pretty happy with that. So from here, I think I might add a little bit of, oh, I've just realized that that is very off center. Let's extend this jar a little bit. Maybe it's more of a really long beaker. Maybe it's a test tube because it's going a little bit too far away to, for any of the so-called liquid in here to actually fall into the beaker. So we're just going to do this. So you might, if you've done, done it, drawn it how I've drawn it, you might need to just extend the beaker a little bit and then we're just going to put some liquid in here now there's many different ways of drawing some of these liquid things um, and you can you can do anything you want so if you wanted to have bits of smoke coming out almost like a mini explosion that would be pretty cool um, or you could draw a puff of smoke um, whatever you want, you can be as creative as you'd like because this is your creative science experiment. 
So it can, he, our spider can be doing anything you can imagine. In fact, if you want, our spider could almost be building a, building a volcano, you know, one of those little volcano experiments and you're pouring the liquid in before it explodes. So you can get as creative as you like and do whatever kind of experiment that you would like. But now from here comes the fun part. We get to decorate the body. So you can add in any kind of pattern that you like. Maybe our spider will have stripes or maybe there'll be spots or maybe there'll be stripes and spots, um, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Uh, so you can add in any kind of shapes and we can decide is our spider furry? Or maybe only furry in a few sections or does our spider have spikes I don't think mine's gonna have spikes but if you want spikes on your spider draw spikes on your spider so this is where the creative decorating part comes in so you can draw any kind of detail that you'd like in fact if anyone wants to look up some exciting reference photos um, I believe they're called the peacock spiders. They're an Australian spider um, and they have these beautiful patterns on them um, and they're really good to reference. So they come up with some really good ideas. Nature has all the best ideas. All right, and I'm thinking maybe I might make a, make a little bit furry, maybe along the shoulder here. Maybe just kind of where it connects to the body. Something like this maybe. They actually look a little bit like flies. I'm not sure I like that. But um, maybe what I'll do, maybe I will, maybe I'll draw some, maybe I'll draw a little bit of smoke coming out of this. I'm going to see what happens when it all comes in. So you can kind of add as much detail as you want, as much characterization as you want. You might want a different expression. If you want to make the, the spider look really kind of surprised and shocked, you can do little white dots in the eyes here. Or maybe we'll do it like, maybe we'll have them coming down. Here we go. Just like this. As if he's not quite sure what's going to happen. Maybe it's quizzical, or oh, maybe this isn't right. So you can play with lots of different expressions. Maybe we'll give them a bit of a curve there going, oh no, what's happening? This isn't right. And then the very last thing we're going to do is we're just going to finish off the web. So we're just going to add in these curvy lines. And what they're going to do is they're going to connect the middle sections of the web to the outside sections of the web. So rather than just being circles, they're going to have these this really interesting shape and you can play with it however you want. But just make sure that when you draw the legs that the legs are still standing on the web. So I'm actually almost going in the opposite direction of the circles, but it has this really lovely feel to it, as you can see which I think is really important. So I'm just making sure that I connect all my feet to the web so that my web's sitting there, it's still sitting there, and it's sitting there, and it's sitting there. So that gives you a very quick idea of how we can draw a spider. And then of course you get to color it in, and that's some of the best parts. So you can color this ask your spider in whatever color you want. And if you have a chance to look at the peacock spiders, you'll see that some of them have absolutely beautiful colors. So have a look, add some color, get drawing, and I can't wait to see what you come up with.